Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Shadow Man with me. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about leavening and getting prepared for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Today is Passover, and today is the day that we're instructed to get the leavening out of the house. But if you follow our channel, you may have noticed the video we put out earlier today talking about leavening. Now, it was from an Old Testament perspective. It touched on the Messiah a little bit, but let me show you something right here. This is up in Matthew chapter 16, where we're talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then you come down to about verse 8, and you see the story of the Messiah instructing the disciples about what leavening truly is. And this is what I believe leavening is. Um, sure, you have the Old Testament side of it, you know, just like you have the lamb and the you have something to do with the fermentation as far as the unleavened bread part. But in the New Testament, like we said, the Messiah, he came and he introduced something else in this verse that we're looking at here. Pull it back up for you. He says in verse 11, how is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? that ye should beware of the leavening of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So he's telling us here that leavening is associated with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which were two of the sects that was around during the time. You also had the Essenes and what they call the Zealots. Now, the Zealots were people that wasn't going to tolerate the Romans at all. So they were just going to make war and they were never going to be at peace. It's, the word zealot, I guess, comes from the word zeal. But then you have the Essenes, who, from what we understand, I don't know if it's a rumor or not, but the Messiah hung around with the Essenes. And so they're not mentioned here in in this as, as to what leavening is. What I plan to do here was to come in and tell you what I've always done when it comes to this leavening here. As far as these Pharisees and these Sadducees, to me, it's talking about the religious leaders. So what I do is I avoid all religious leaders and their doctrine. So when it comes to getting the leavening out of the house, that's what I do. I remove books from um, religious leaders, like to name a few, Kenneth Copeland, T.D. Jakes, um, Joyce Myers. My wife used to read. I'm trying to think of some of the other um, people who we may have a book in their house. Well, they are talking about the scripture and that's what leavening is. It takes what would otherwise be a lump and thick and hard and, you know, kind of chewy and fluffens it up and makes it light and palatable. So that's what they're doing when they take a scripture and break it down for us is they're adding leavening to it. They're adding this fluff to the scripture. And our father's not necessarily saying that something's wrong with that. Um, he tells us in other scripture that we have to have a preacher. But what he's saying is during this week of unleavened bread, what we have to do is avoid all of that and just go with the scripture alone. So when we're getting the leavening out of our house, what we're looking for is stuff like um, programming, religious programming, television shows. We won't be looking at those during this week at all. We have to make sure we don't look at those shows. If we like religious shows, um, we don't want to listen to those. But now if we wanted to listen to the scripture, the Bible in audio form, that's perfect. And that's the other thing that I wanted to do was to give you guys some links up here to some scripture that you can listen to in audio form. This is the unleavened loaf here. These are scriptures, um, nothing but the word of God. YouTube may throw some commercials in there or something like that. But what you're not going to have is somebody talking and adding fluff to it, adding their opinion to the scripture. Because this week is about getting away from that. Now, some of the other stuff we look for, I look for especially is books like from Charles Larkin. That will be leavening because he's talking about scripture. He's not a prophet, but, you know, it's a very good book. So I'm going to bring it back in the house after the feast is over, just like I will Josephus. He is um, a historian, um, a very good historian on biblical history. So I'll bring his book back in. But it's actually talking about scripture. And so there's some errors in the book of Josephus, just like in the book of Charles Larkin. And so in this week, we're asked to separate ourselves from these errors is what it seems like to me. 
It's like we're in a period of time where our father is one to bring us the unadulterated word of God to fill us up kind of for the rest of the year. It seemed like to me like one week. Um, it's like we're in the reserves where one week we're expected to um, read his scripture and then for the rest of the year, it's all right. We can start to um, enjoy the leavening again. You could come back to your favorite YouTube channels or you can go back and get your books back. But as an end result, one thing that I've learned is people, a lot of times they don't go, they don't go back. A lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll go out and they'll read the scripture uh, for the first time, like uh, the book of Genesis and the rest of the Torah. And then they just don't go back to church anymore because it's like, you know, they start to get the big picture. They start to see the differences between what we learn in church and what the scripture says. And I almost forgot to add emphasis to this part. So let me go ahead and talk about it here. And that is Easter Sunday. No matter what we do in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, whether we know what we're doing, whether we're new to the faith, whether, you know, we think we have it all down pat. The one thing that we all must avoid is everything Easter, anything associated with Easter. Um, no, no eggs, no going to church, especially no listening to ministers talk about um, Easter. You don't want to listen to any ministers at all not even coaching the fight, but you definitely don't want to be associated with Easter during this week. So whatever you do, don't find yourself down at church on Easter Sunday. Some people don't return, but that ain't what the scripture is saying. It's saying is that this is a week long celebration. So everything can return to normal if you want it to. Or if you want to stay on the path of reading the scripture, you can continue on. And so that's why I offer you some of these books here and you can look at some of the playlists that are coming up on the screen. You can come back and look at the video, at least find this part again, so you can see these uh, these playlists that are popping up. But these will be my choices as far as scripture is concerned. Of course, there will be this Old Testament and the New Testament, but then there'll also be the Third Testament of the Bible. Then there's gonna be some Shepherd of Hermas, some Gospel of Thomas, and some other books up here, um, as many as YouTube will allow me to post. So just wanted to share this with you guys. Hope I didn't confuse anybody. I um, want to thank you guys for your support of this channel and everything. And I pray that you enjoy your Feast of Unleavened Bread. And I say I'm going to start adding bloopers to this video as I was editing. I noticed that you guys will see my feet down here. You probably think that's weird. But look close. You ain't ready. Yep. That's a blue ribbon. Shalom.